I'm Tom from Do-It-Yourself Home Automation, and it was announced today, or at least sort of widely shared today, that Fitbit is considering selling their business. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's sort of been speculated that Google could be a potential target to acquire Fitbit. And, you know, I think this makes a lot of sense. So I've been saying for a while now that I've seen Fitbit moving away from hardware um, and more towards services. So we saw earlier this month the launch of Fitbit Premium, where they're, instead of selling you a tracker every couple of months or years, a uh, hardware device, they're focusing more on selling you an ongoing subscription data service where they're analyzing your data from the tracker and giving you recommendations and personalized feedback, like the feedback you see at the top of the screen here in their app, um, you know, really detailed sleep tracking and that kind of thing. And I think this is a big shift and one that makes sense for Fitbit. Um, and, you know, the reasons for this really go back to the origins of the company. So I've been wearing a Fitbit for about eight years now. I started in 2011. It's 2019 now. I've been wearing their devices almost every day for that whole time period. And I started with their very first tracker. Um, and when that came out, it was really a hardware revolution. Uh, it was basically the first device that would accurately track steps and give you an ability to sync that data uh, and, you know, view it and analyze it. And really the only competition at the time were these really cheapo pedometers you get at the drugstore. Um, they had a little digital readout and they track steps for, you know, if you, if you swung your arm or you sat down in a chair. And they just weren't really very accurate and they didn't provide any ability to analyze your data. So when Fitbit came out with their first device, which was like a kind of glorified paperclip you'd put on your belt to track your steps, um, it was really, you know, again, pretty revolutionary hardware with a tiny battery and uh, accelerometers, and they used that along with their own algorithm to track steps much more accurately than anyone else. And at the time, that was a big deal, and there wasn't really anyone else doing it, so they were dominant in that hardware piece of the market and could do really well there. But if you fast forward eight years, you know, now uh, I think step tracking and accurate step tracking is really a commodity product. So you see, you know, your phone tracks your steps. Everybody's smartwatch will track your steps and pretty accurately. Um, so that's really no longer a way to distinguish themselves. And, you know, that leaves them with, in terms of hardware, you know, where would they go um, where step tracking is not as relevant? Well, we saw them try to go into the smartwatch market. And they have two very capable smartwatches with the Versa and the Ionic. Um, and I wear an Ionic. Uh, I've worn an Ionic for the last several years. I wear a Versa now um, every day. And, you know, they're great smartwatches, but they have a lot of competition in that space. Um, Apple and Samsung with the Apple Watch and the Samsung Galaxy Gear line are really dominant in that space. Um, and their smartwatches do step tracking, but they're also integrated into the whole sort of ecosystem of the iOS platform um, or Android. And they have apps and developers building all kinds of different uh, things beyond fitness tracking for those devices. And also Apple and Samsung have incredibly deep pockets so they can outspend Fitbit in the hardware space on you know, manufacturing, on developers, uh, on basically everything. So I think it would be pretty hard for Fitbit to um, compete in the long run in the hardware space against other smartwatches. And they've done a really good job, I think, of staying relevant with their own smartwatches that do work really well. But um, ultimately, I think it would be very expensive and challenging for them to remain a hardware company given the competition. So, you know, again, we've seen the move towards this service model uh, with Fitbit Premium. And I think it makes perfect sense for them to you know, look at this and go, well, does it make sense for us to go it alone ultimately? And I think, you know, as they've probably uh, seen, the answer is probably not. Um, working with a partner like Google, um, they would have experience and be able to sell these, these sort of service models on top of hardware. And we've seen Google do a really good job with that, with their Android operating system, where they're selling Android um, as a service on top of hardware from, you know, hundreds of different phone manufacturers. And it does really well for Google. It works really well for the ecosystem of different phones. And I could see Fitbit becoming, you know, a service almost like Google Assistant that Google could put on top of other people's hardware. And it could be, you know, a Samsung Gear watch, or it could be uh, that they contract with someone to build their own smartwatch. Um, they're a big tech company. They don't have their own smartwatch versus Samsung and Apple do. So maybe they'd want to create their own hardware and then, you know, use Fitbit as the software layer on top of that. Um, a couple other things that make sense, uh, you know, for this sort of merger or acquisition. Um, if Google did acquire Fitbit, they'd be getting, you know, almost a decade of user data. And Google's whole business model is built around analyzing and monetizing 
user data for advertising. So being able to look at people's heart rates and step counts and all of that kind of information for a decade would really be you know, a, a big uh, benefit, I think. And Google would probably find ways to monetize that data that Fitbit would not be able to as long as users are okay with it. Um, so that's a big piece. And then I think the other thing that Fitbit has at this point that's not a commodity product is their sleep tracking. Uh, their sleep tracking algorithm is excellent. They've done a great job of uh, building this out. They're probably going in new directions like looking at sleep apnea. We just saw the launch of their sleep score, which I think is a great metric, uh, as I've shown in other videos. And you know, no one else really has a, a great uh, sleep tracking algorithm for smartwatches. Even Apple doesn't do that natively at the moment. So that's a uh, distinguisher that uh, I think Google could probably do, again, a really great job of monetizing. So we'll see how this goes. Um, you know, as, a, again, a long-term user of Fitbit, I think it's probably a good direction for the company, ultimately. Um, I'd hate to see them go the direction of, you know, action cams, for example, where there were whole companies like Flip Video built around action cams, and then we saw when, you know, smartphones uh, started to have really good cameras, you know, that, that whole industry really became a lot less relevant. Um, and I think an acquisition by a company like Google could make a lot of sense for Fitbit services long term. So it's something I'll be following um, and, uh, you know, check back here for more information uh, on it. And, uh, you know, let me know in the comments what you think of this possibility. If you found this helpful in any way, please subscribe to my channel. It really helps.